How to create a bottom sheet in Flutter. Firstly, we create an elevated button and if we press on it, we call the method show model bottom sheet. Within the builder property, you put all the widgets inside that should be displayed inside of this bottom sheet. In this case, we have placed a button inside the bottom sheet and if we press on this button, we call the navigator pop method and with this, we can hide this bottom sheet again. By default, the bottom sheet is not rounded. To change it, you can supply a shape and we make the top rounded. Hot reload, close this bottom sheet and open it up again and you see that our bottom sheet is rounded. In case you place within the builder property multiple widgets inside that take more than half of the screen, then you get an overflow error. To fix this, you simply go to the show model bottom sheet and add this is scroll control to true. And also within the column, you need to set the main axis size to min. With this, if we close this bottom sheet and open it up again, you see it takes more space. How to create an expansion tile widget in Flutter. Simply create an expansion tile widget and define a title. With this, we have the title animals and this expandable item at the end. Whereas within the children property, you create some widgets. And these widgets are only displayed in the expanded state and not in the shrinked state anymore. To also click on each of these list tiles, you can add within each of your list tiles an on tap handler. With this, we can tap on each of the list tiles. And lastly, within your expansion tile, you can also add the on expansion change property. Whereas we get every time the change if we have shrinked the expansion tile or if we have expanded it. How to create a checkbox widget in Flutter. Firstly, we create a Boolean field that determines if our checkbox is checked and this goes as a value into our checkbox. And secondly, we also want to change the checkbox and put this new value inside of our state. With this, we have a simple checkbox that we can uncheck and check again. And also set the background and foreground color of the checkbox. Also, if you untake this checkbox, you have this grayish border around. To change this color, you can simply wrap a seam widget around and change inside the seam the unselected color to this red color. And with this, we have now here also this border in red. And lastly, you can convert the checkbox to a checkbox list tile. And with this, you can give it also a title and subtitle. And if you like, you can also put with the control affinity this leading inside so that the checkbox is moved to the beginning. Let's also try it out. We can tap here anywhere and it will be unchecked or checked. How to create a pop-up dialog in Flutter. Let's start with an elevated button. If we press on this button, we call the show dialog method. Within this builder, we create an alert dialog whereas you can define the title and also the content of your dialog. At the bottom of the dialog, you can also create some actions. We create a text button, OK. If you like, you can also create a second text button, in this case, cancel. With this, if we click on this button, this dialog will pop up. And if you click on one of these buttons, then the dialog is hiding again, because we call the navigator pop method to hide this dialog. How to create a drop-down menu in Flutter. Firstly, we create a list of drop-down menu items and also the item that is currently selected. Next, we create a drop-down button and put the selected item and items inside, whereas for each item, you need to map them to a drop-down menu item. And here we access every time the item and then we display it as a text widget. And lastly, you also need to implement the unchanged property, whereas you put every time the item that you are newly selecting inside of the selected item within our state. With this, we have a drop-down menu where you can select different items. Also, you can wrap around the drop-down button a size box to change the width of your drop-down menu. And finally, you can make it to a form field to also include a decoration, whereas we create a rounded decoration give it some width and also a color. How to swipe between pages horizontally or vertically within your Flutter app. Simply add a page view with three colored containers. Also add a text widget to each of your containers. With this, you could swipe horizontally between the pages. Optionally, set the scroll direction to vertical to swipe vertically between the pages. Also, you could listen to page changes, whereas if I scroll the page, then you see always a change in the console. 
Optionally, you can set the scroll physics to never scrollable to disable the swiping completely. And finally, you could add a controller to your page view that you initialize within your state. Within the controller, you can set the initial page that is always displayed at the start, in this case, the page two, the first index. Let's also use this controller. Therefore, we go to our app bar where I have created two icons. If we click on the left icon, then we call the animate to page method on the controller and we go to the zero index, our first page. And if we click on the right icon, then we call the animate to page method again and go to the second index, our last page. With this, if we click on the left icon, we go to the first page and if we click on the right icon, we go to the last page. Alternatively, you can also call the method previous page or our next page. As a result, if we click on the left icon, we always go to the previous page and if we click on the right icon, we always go to the next page. How to expand and collapse list items in Flutter. Let's start with a list of items, whereas each item has a header text and a body text. And now we want to display these items inside of the UI, inside of an expansion panel list. We simply map each of the items to an expansion panel radio object, whereas here inside you need to define a header builder and body. So let's define first of all the header builder. And here inside we display a text widget with the item header. And within the body we display then a text widget with the item body. And finally, you need to define a value that needs to be unique since it identifies each list item. With this, we have five expansion panels. For each panel, we display the header builder. And if you expand it, then we also show the body. By default, you always need to click on this icon to collapse and expand the panel. So you cannot tap here anywhere else. And if you want to also tap anywhere else, then you can set this can tap on header to true. With this, you can tap anywhere at the header to collapse and expand the panel. Right now, if you open another panel, then the panel one closes because we can only have one panel open at a time. To have multiple expansion panels open, simply remove the radio from your panel and from your list. And now instead of the value within your panel, you need to supply an is expanded flag. Therefore, each item needs to have this flag. So we need to start manually here inside. Also in the expansion panel list, we need to add an expansion callback. And here we can then basically toggle every time the is expanded state of our panel and put it inside of our item. With this, the expansion callback is always triggered if we expand a panel or if we shrink the panel. And now we can also have multiple panels open at the same time. How to create an app bar in Flutter. Inside the scaffold, add an app bar widget and within this app bar, you can create a title. Next, you can change the background color of the app bar. On the left side of the title, you can place an icon. Also wrap it inside of an icon button. With this, you can also tap on this icon. And finally, with the actions property, you can create a list of icons that is displayed on the right side. Optionally, you can extend the app bar by defining the bottom property and then you can place any widget within this bottom space. How to create a tab bar in Flutter. Firstly, you need to wrap around the scaffold widget, a default tab controller widget and supply the length of how many tabs you like to have. Secondly, you go to the app bar and here inside you define then these three tabs that you have defined on top before. And lastly, within the scaffold body property, you can then create for each of the tabs a page. In our case, we have three tabs, therefore also three pages. With this, we have three tabs at the top and also the pages below for each tab that we have defined within the tab bar view. If you like, you can also add an icon to each of your tabs. And with this, our tab has each time an icon. How to create a pop-up menu in Flutter. Inside the app bar, add a pop-up menu button. Also define a list of pop-up menu items. With this, we have in the app bar this pop-up menu with our four items. Next, we add to each of the items a value which comes from an enum class. With this, we can listen to on which item we have tapped and we get the value of this item. And then based on this value, you can perform some actions such as navigating to a new item page. As a result, if we tap on the first item, we navigate to a new page, the item page that I have created in a separate file. 